Today I want to show you how to go about tanning rattlesnake skin. And I've seen a lot of variations with boards and nails and salt and kerosene. And quite frankly, none of those methods are very good. Uh, it might be the way your grandfather told you how to do it, but I've got a better way. And I want to show you how to do that today. Uh, eight or nine, I was at a rattlesnake roundup, showed interest in one of the vendors. And he had made the, had the pre-made, prefab bottle of rattlesnake tanning fluid and uh, kind of begged him for the, the recipe for a little while and he laughed it off. Before I left, he slid me a little piece of paper with uh, the two ingredients and how to do it on a piece of paper and kind of con conspiratorially slid that to me when nobody was looking. And I've been doing this ever since and I'm, I'm forever grateful for that. But I want to show you the secret. Uh, a couple parts and pieces to this. Obviously, you need to have the rattlesnakes. Uh, they're all skinned. If you want to know how to do this uh, with any of the snakes, uh, you can go ahead and click on the link above. That's where I've got the rattlesnake skinning and cooking demo. So if you want to know how I've got them to this form, and if that big one looks familiar, you've already seen that video. Go ahead and click on the link above. I've also got a pickle jar. I like using glass. It doesn't let a lot of the chemicals soak into it. It's eternal. It works really, really well for what I'm going to be doing. The chemicals used, very simple, ridiculously simple. First one is glycerin, and you can buy this at the store, it's a preservative, uh, also used for first aid. Where I buy it is pretty much uh, your horse places, your equestrian places, your western stores. Anywhere that has veterinarian supplies, you can buy glycerin by the quart, and it's a lot cheaper. So this is one quart of glycerin. This is enough to do probably 50 or 60 rattlesnakes. So you can reuse it quite a bit. The other ingredient, so the only two part, is 70 to 90 percent isopropyl alcohol. That's it. Those are the two parts. Whenever you see them selling this stuff up there at the rattlesnake roundups or online, that's it. One to one mixed up. That's what we're going to do right now. Go ahead, open up my pickle jar and show you how this is done. All right, so let's mix up some chemicals. This needs to be a one to one. So I'm going to go ahead and pour all my glycerin in there. And although I'm just showing you three of these rattlesnake skins, I've got about 20 other ones that have come come to me over the past year. Uh, people killing rattlesnakes wanting me to do the skins up or they find them. Uh, make no mistake, I'm not out there killing rattlesnakes all the time. I'm rather against that. Put all the glycerin in there. That's one quart. You want to go ahead and put your alcohol in there. And so this is one quart. That's all it's going to take. One to one. Now the, the glycerin is going to go ahead and preserve it and it gives that skin just a really nice texture. The isopropyl alcohol is going to kill all the microbes and all the things that are going to give your snake skin a bad smell or eventually eat it. So it's going to sterilize it. It works out pretty well. At this point I can mix it up if I want to but in the next step I'm going to mix it anyway. So I'm going to go ahead and unwrap the rattlesnake skins. And this is the one that I did a video over just a few months ago. Beautiful skin. Ought to come out real pretty. And this has been frozen. Uh, if you've been out on the trail and you've, you've had to preserve this for a couple of days out on the trail before you got to, to refrigeration, a lot of times I would, uh, I would put salt on them and roll them up just like this. If you do have salt or any other chemicals on this thing, you need to go ahead and uh, wash them off. You need to wash it off with water quite a bit. Uh, lots of water, lots of water. Get all that salt out of there. Okay, so that's one. Doesn't really matter. You can put all of them in there all at once. I've done up to a dozen of them in one of these jars before. And they work out. But check out that beautiful skin. Gorgeous skin. Go 
and unwrap it. Make sure it's all out there looking pretty. Okay. You don't want to have any parts folded up or rolled up still where the uh, chemicals can't get to it. Because that's the name of the game. They want to infuse and preserve every bit. And you can see these. These are all diamondback rattlesnakes, Crotalus atrox. And they've all been frozen, so... I'm going to guess that this came from, uh, from somebody else, because I'm seeing bullet holes. And uh, I do see it as, as a loss for somebody to go and, and kill these guys and shoot them this way. But if they're going to go ahead and do it, and that, that creature is dead and gone, they might as well bring me the skin and I can, I can make something out of it. So I'm going to stir this up. Your alcohol and your glycerin is not going to going to mix on their own. I'm going to get everything nice and mixed up. And now you play the waiting game. Uh, this container needs to be sealed. You're going to wait approximately seven days, and it needs to be out of the sunlight. Seven days, once or twice a day. Come through. Back and forth a, few, forth a few times, and that's it. Uh, second part of this video, I'm going to go ahead and roll over to that, and it's going to be seven days from now, and I'll show you exactly how we go about stretching these out, because they will constrict up. Uh, the fluid might get a little discolored, not very much. It's still reusable, and we'll give you some more tips and show you how it's done, but hope you learned something. It's been seven days, and at this point, you should have already shaken this thing up at least once every single day, agitating the isopropyl alcohol, the glycerin, and your rattlesnake skins. Uh, for one of the last steps, and this is right now, you're going to need just one thing, and that is going to be a stick, okay? And it's going to be a fairly rough stick. Doesn't have to be perfect. I'm not going to use the dowel rod. Uh, remember whenever I unwrapped the skins, they were about this wide. There's a reason why I'm, I'm getting this extra bit of stick here. You want to have that. And having it rough usually works to your benefit, and I'll show you why in just a moment. But one stick per skin, and this is what you're going to do. So I'm going to go ahead and pull out one of those diving back skins. Kind of let it drain a little bit because... Even though that doesn't look very appetizing down there, I can do a few more snake skins with these chemicals. They're not done yet, so use them up. Check out that skin. It's not ready yet. Notice how it's all crinkled up. Not very pretty. Uh, can't really sell that, can't really use that for crafts just yet. So this is what we're going to do. And this works really, really well. Uh, a lot of times I've seen people at this stage of the process go ahead and use uh, a pegboard and use nails. You're going to end up with lots of holes all the way through your snake skin. You're going to end up with weird patterns where it waves in and out, wherever you had pressure points and where it wasn't tight enough. The stick method works the best. So Usually you want to do this with two people, but uh, if there's only one of you, you'll find a way. What I'm going to do is go ahead up here on the neck, which pretty much the whole snake is a neck, but up here where the head was connected, I'm going to put it on the stick and stretch it out, okay, as much as possible. And it's going to stretch out more and more. Uh, it's, it looks all crinkly down there, but the snake is a pretty good sized snake, and this is what we're going to do to be able to get it flattened out and be able to get it where it looks like it's showroom quality or ready to go and be part of your leather working or wall mount or whatever you want to do. So what I'm doing here as I do this, I am pulling the sides out and you're going to have lots of flexibility here. You want to pull them out to the point where it feels like that skin is ripping just a little bit. And you don't want to actually feel it tear, but the elasticity of a snake Remember, they can eat some really big things and expand. is pretty, uh, pretty amazing. 
And the further you stretch this as you roll it, the better off you're going to be. It's a beautiful snake skin. A lot of times I'll actually get a larger stick or a longer stick because of this. Some of these skins don't look as big, or the snakes don't look as big as I can make the skins become. I'm just going to keep on, keep on rolling. Notice how wide that's getting to be. It's a beautiful snake skin. This is the last step that you're actually going to have to really put some effort into stuff. I've seen a lot of people do this the first time and they have to unroll it. Do it again. Go ahead and do it again. It's worth it. All the way down. Gorgeous diving back. Starting to taper down again. Keep on stretching as you go. All the way to the end of the tail. That rattle might not work right now because it's got glycerin and, and alcohol inside of it. So, not really the, the same effect. But that'll dry out, especially with the alcohol. Being exposed to the air is going to dry it out. And there you go. That's the last labor-intensive portion of this process. Uh, you should smell nothing but isopropyl alcohol at this point. Uh, if you're smelling any kind of decay or rot, it should not have gone into the, the solution with that smell. That means that bacteria are already eating it up and your snake skin might be compromised. You want to go ahead and get these snake skins frozen or in the batch as quickly as possible because they, they decompose quite quickly. But this is it. Now I've sealed a lot of glycerin and a lot of alcohol inside this wrapping it up tight. I know a lot of people have questions about that. But what I'm going to go ahead and do is find a dark room away from everybody else. And all I need now is a fan. I hang this up. I put a bladed fan uh, blowing air on it. About a day to two days later, I can unwrap this. It will keep its form. It will keep its pliability. It won't be crisp. It will be nice and flattened out. It will be a showpiece and ready for leather work. Uh, just a fan. Don't use sun. Don't put a heater on it. Don't try and, and uh, to speed this process up. Again, the sun is not your friend when it comes to any kind of uh, biomatter like leather or snakeskin. Use the fan and it's going to dry the whole thing out. You should have a beautiful snake skin that smells like glycerin, which is just a preserving agent. It's got that new car smell to it. And uh, that's it, guys. Don't want to encourage y'all to go out and kill a lot of rattlesnakes, but every once in a while it happens, or you've got to remove one off the property where your kids are. And this is one of the ways in which you can go and use this skin so the, the death of that snake is not in vain. If you'll go ahead and uh, look above me, I'll have the, the link to one of the videos where I actually go and show how to skin and how to cook these rattlesnakes in a very primitive matter, manner. And uh, I like them. They're all over the place here in Texas. So you might as well find a use for them. But like and subscribe. And we'll catch you next time on the next video. Take care.